This video is going to define joint, marginal, and conditional probabilities, as well as show you how to calculate each one of them. Before we can calculate any probabilities, the first thing we have to do is define the intersection. Let's say we're running two different experiments. One experiment is rolling a die. The other experiment is flipping a coin. What we can do now is identify an event from each experiment. Let's let event A be the event that we roll an even number on the die. And we'll let event B be the event that we flip heads on the coin. The intersection of two events occurs whenever both event A and event B occur at the same time. The notation for the intersection is either A and B with the word and in between, or A and B. In between the A and the B, we have the intersection symbol that just looks like an upside down U. So the upside down U is just the symbol that we use to denote the intersection of two events. In this case, the intersection of our events would be the event that occurs whenever we roll both an even number and we flip heads. Now that we've set up both of our experiments and both of our events, we can define the joint probability. The joint probability is the probability that the intersection of two events occurs. The notation for the joint probability is really just taking the notation for the intersection and putting it inside of the probability symbol. So the probability of A and B, or the probability of A with your intersection symbol followed by a B. Now that we have both of our experiments defined, we can figure out the different joint probabilities that we'll be able to calculate. Experiment 1 is the experiment where we're rolling the die. We can let event A1 be the event that we roll an even number. And we can let event A2 be the event that we roll an odd number. For our second experiment, flipping the coin, event B1 can be the event that we flip heads. Event B2 is the event that we flip tails. Now we have two possible events for each experiment. What this means is that there are four possible intersections. Rolling an even number and flipping heads. Rolling an even number and flipping tails. Rolling an odd number and flipping heads. And rolling an odd number and flipping tails. When the number of events for each experiment that we're running is small, we can define our joint probabilities using a table of probabilities. The outcomes for one experiment get listed along the rows. So our first experiment was rolling a die. We had two possible events, rolling an even number and rolling an odd number. The outcomes for the other experiment get listed at the top of the columns. Our second experiment was flipping the coin. Our two possible events were heads and tails. The joint probabilities then go inside of the table. So for example, in the first row and the first column, that's the combination of rolling an even number and flipping heads. So the probability of rolling an even number and flipping heads gets placed in the top left cell. You can repeat this for the other three cells as well. First row, second column is rolling an even number and flipping tails. The bottom row is rolling an odd number. The first cell in the bottom row would be the event where you roll odd and flip heads. The second cell in the bottom row is rolling an odd number and flipping tails. Here's an example of how you calculate joint probabilities using a table. Let's say we take a sample of people and we ask the subjects if they smoke. We also break down the results of the survey by gender as well. So our two variables here are gender and whether or not the person smokes. We want to know what is the probability that a person is male and does not smoke. Well, in order to figure this out, we need the cell where we have the intersection of male and a non-smoker. So the first thing we do is we find the row for male and circle that row. We find the column for a non-smoker and circle the column. The place where this row and this column intersect gives us the joint probability. So in this case, male and a non-smoker intersect at 0.32. What this tells us is that the probability that a person is male and does not smoke is equal to 0.32. The 
second type of probability that we can define today is called the marginal probability. The marginal probability is the probability that an individual event from one experiment occurs regardless of the outcomes from another experiment. Marginal probabilities are computed by identifying the row or the column in the table of the desired event and adding up all of those probabilities in that row or in that column. Marginal probabilities always only involve a single experiment. The other experiment will not be mentioned if you're looking for a marginal probability. Marginal probabilities get their names from the fact that they're written in the margins of the table. You add up all of the probabilities in the row or in the column, and you write that sum in the margin of the table. The notation that we use for a marginal probability is just the probability of the desired event inside the parentheses. Here's an example of calculating marginal probabilities. We take a survey and we ask the subjects if they would vote for a qualified woman for president. The results are then further broken down by gender. So we have gender along the rows. We have whether or not the person would vote for a female along the columns. What we want to do is fill in all of the marginal probabilities. Now the easy one goes down in the bottom right. The sum of all of your joint probabilities in a table of probabilities has to equal 1. What we can do now is look at the individual rows for gender and the individual columns for whether or not they would vote for a female. So take the first row. We can figure out the probability that a person involved in the survey was male, regardless of whether or not they would vote for a female, by adding up the joint probabilities in the row for males. 0 0.41 plus 0 0.07 gives us 0 0.48. So the probability that a person involved in the survey was male is 0.48. We can do the same thing for females. 0.47 plus 0 0.05 gives us 0.52. So the marginal probability that a person was female in this survey is 0.52. Moving over to our other experiment, our other variable, whether or not a person would vote for a female, in the yes column we have 0 0.41 plus 0 0.47 which gives us 0.88. So the marginal probability that a person would vote for a female for president, regardless of which gender they are, is 0.88. The marginal probability that someone would not vote for a qualified female for president, 0 0.07 plus 0 0.05, which gives us 0 0.12. The third type of probability that we can define is a conditional probability. When one event occurs in one experiment, it may actually impact the probability of an event from a different experiment. This is where conditional probabilities come into play. A conditional probability is the probability that a second event, we'll call it event B, will occur given that we know some other event, event A, has already occurred. Now one note here, A and B are coming from two separate experiments, just like our rolling the die and flipping the coin example. We have two separate experiments that we're looking at events from. The notation for a conditional probability is the probability of B given A. So the event that you're looking for the probability for comes first. Then we write a vertical bar. The vertical bar, you can read that as the word given. Event A comes after the vertical bar. Event A is the event that has already occurred. So the probability of B given A is the probability that event B will occur given that we already know event A has occurred. It turns out that calculating a conditional probability is a little bit more difficult than just calculating a joint probability or a marginal probability. The probability of B given A where B is the event that we want the probability for, and A is the event that has already occurred, is equal to the joint probability of A and B divided by the marginal probability of A, the marginal probability of the event that has already occurred. So to calculate the conditional probability, first find the joint probability of A and B, then find the marginal probability of the event that has already occurred, in this case, event A, 
divide the joint probability by the marginal probability, and you're left with the conditional probability of B given A. Let's take a look at one example of calculating conditional probabilities. So, college students were asked if they have ever cheated on an exam. The results were further broken down by gender. So we have gender along the rows. We have whether or not the person has cheated on the exam in the columns. All of your joint probabilities are inside the table, as well as the marginal probabilities. The question that we want to answer is, given that a person has cheated on an exam, what is the probability that he is male? So in this case, we're given that this person has cheated on the exam. This is the information that we know. We want the probability that he is male. Setting up the conditional probability is going to look like this. We want the probability that this person is male. That's the event that we don't know. Given the event that we do know, the event that we do know is that the person has cheated on an exam. So we want the probability of being male given that the person has cheated. We can rewrite this conditional probability as a joint probability divided by a marginal probability. The probability that both events occur, the probability of being male and having cheated on an exam, divided by the marginal probability that the person has cheated on an exam. Now to figure out the joint probability, we find the row for male, we find the column for whether or not they've cheated, and we intersect the row with the column. That gives us 0.32. So the joint probability that a person is male and has cheated on an exam is 0.32. Then what we do is we find the marginal probability that the person has cheated on an exam. We just need the column for yes, they have cheated on an exam. That column is the first column, which tells us that the marginal probability that the person has cheated on an exam is 0.6. That goes down in the denominator. Taking the ratio here, 0.32 divided by 0.6 gives us the conditional probability that a person is male given that they have cheated on an exam. Our final probability here, our final conditional probability, is 0.5333.